Mama C, it's all yours. Welcome, Maya. All right. The workout. Welcome. <laughs> and we have two beautiful ladies here with us, Maya and Trish. And <sighs> talk about our health matters because it really does. You know, and, and I'm 67. I wish I had learned this lesson 20 years ago, but like they say, better late than never, you know? So I'm feeling better because I'm changing some behaviors, uh, in particular dietary behaviors, uh, and I'm feeling good. I'm feeling more energetic. I'm working with my doctors. I'm telling them what's going on with me and they're doing what needs to be done to make sure everything is balanced. So it's really all about us taking responsibility for ourselves. Nobody's responsible for our health for our lives, for our successes. They are all up to us, am I right? So welcome ladies, let's talk. Maya, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, you know, uh, I think that when we were talking prior to the, to the beginning of the show, you, you were saying so many awesome things with respect to health and, and, and what has to be done, what needs to be done uh, in terms of our taking charge and responsibility for it all you know like my daughter was saying you know she's really good at the uh, dietary part but she still needs to do some exercising and she she kind of looks to you to kind of inspire her to get get motivated and, and and to do what she needs to be done Maya tell everybody about about what you do who you are just fill everyone in so they'll know okay well I know my name down there says Maya Bryan, but I am married. My name is Maya Allen, and I know my husband would be um, not happy with me if I didn't give him his just due by mentioning his last name, Maya Allen. Um, and I am a trainer. I do work with clients in the area of just kind of building muscle and toning and losing weight. However, for the past three or so years, I have not been utilizing my certificate because I have been being trained to participate in the area of um, competing in figure competitions. So I have just found a newfound love doing that. All right. And within competing, I do try to teach others and spread the word about how important nutrition and health is. 
not just to people who are overweight trying to, to lose weight and get in shape, but for any and everybody, doesn't matter what age and stage of life you are in, just as you have already mentioned. Right. So I just try to take knowledge that I learn and try to pass it on to everyone who wants to listen. And like you said, um, trying to encourage people to do the right thing is a hard thing. But let me make something very clear. You don't have to do it. We yeah. don't have to do anything that we don't wanna do. You don't have to. If you wanna eat five cheeseburgers, <laughs> have at it. But just understand there are consequences that come with that type of lifestyle. That, and that's just basically it. And it's, we're not doing what we do so we can live forever. We already have a date that we're gonna meet Christ. That's period. But while we're here, we do have a responsibility to live our best life as best as we can and take care of our temples, if that makes any sense at all. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, not taking care of our bodies, uh, there is a consequence to that, and that's for sure. And I can definitely testify and speak on that uh, because I spent so much of my life um, taking care of everybody else. As an empath, I tend to put everybody before myself until I learned that I was an empath and what that meant and that I've got to take care of myself first and foremost. And so I began to shift my priorities. And, you know, I'm, you know, when it comes to my family, they still kind of come first. I try and remember that, you know, there are things that I need to do. But um, outside of my household, you know, I know how to say no, mean it, and uh, prioritize. You know, I love doing things for other people. And if I can, I sure will but I'm not now going to do it uh, in lieu of my taking care of myself. So I so agree with you there. Uh, Trish, tell everyone who you are. And, and I know we just came, you, me, and Tiffany, under Tiffany's guidance, just came through a 10-day uh, green smoothie fast. And that was interesting. So let's talk about that a little bit. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am Trish with I Am Radiant. And yes, Mama C, the 10 day, it was phenomenal. It was something I have never, and I say never, never done. All okay. Right. And I'm going to piggyback on what Maya said about the resolution. She never made resolutions. Mm -hmm. In my 50 plus years, mm -hmm. I have never made a resolution. Don't mm -hmm. believe in them because yeah. you start something, well, you say something the year prior and then the next year come and it, it goes to the wayside. There you so go you lie, again. Mm -hmm. You lie to yourself and yeah. I'm not in the habit of lying to me. Right. Okay. Right. So when Tiffany put the 10 day out there, now this is not the first time she put it out there. <laughs> okay. She put it out there many times. I remember when she became certified in it, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna do it this time because I need to be accountable and I need someone else to hold me Account accountable. Yeah. Okay, I'm good with holding other people accountable, but where is that person to hold me accountable? Absolutely. Absolutely. So when she said, okay, this is what we're doing, I'm like, Okay. And then when she told me some of the items we had to eat, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I don't eat that. <laughs> maybe, maybe I could, in my head, I'm standing there with Tiffany and I'm going, oh, okay. So I could use this other fruit. And she goes, and I said it to myself. I didn't even say it in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Ghost is a snitch because Tiffany goes, no, Trish, you cannot substitute by adding more of that fruit. And I'm like, <laughs> I just fell out laughing because uh -huh. I couldn't believe I got busted before I said and before I was able to put it in, into action. <laughs> okay, So I was already trying to set myself up for failure, but she quickly snatched that back from me. Hello. 
Hello. And see, that's what happens when you, when you, when there's a body of God centered women working together, we can hear what you don't want us to hear. Okay, we can we can read each other's minds. Uh, we can feel each other's energy and sense the aura and everything. And sometimes I can look at people, I know exactly what they're thinking. And when you say it, it kind of blows people's minds. So I, I get you there. You know, sometimes, you know, it don't matter how God-centered we are sometimes. It's like, it still blows our mind that somebody can read us like that. Okay. <laughs> Holy Ghost, you a snitch. I ain't asked you to be up in my business. <laughs> did not. Hello, hello, girl. So here's what the 10 day does. In 2017, there was a group of us who started Our Health Matters. Uh, I think we changed the name a couple of times. Um, it was myself, uh, a few other ladies, and Maya. And Maya um, does training, fitness training and exercise. I'm more on the nutritional part. I'm, I'm, I focus on that. Um, I was certified by uh, JJ Smith in the 10 day green smoothie cleanse. So I focused on that um, and I really just did all of her programs, followed it to the T. Didn't change a, 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 a peach, an orange, whatever the book said. <laughs> I did. And then I went and I went to DC, met JJ Smith, um, got trained and certified in it. So I've been doing it for a while. So I run groups periodically. And I think the next one that we're going to do, I think is going to be probably February 1st, um, That's what you said. which is a 10 day green smoothie cleanse where we go strictly by the book and we focus on only what you're supposed to be eating during that time that's in the book. And that cleanse is to help you detox from the sugar, the donuts, the, all the stuff that you really like to eat and just clean out your system. Um, a lot of what the book says to do is what you should do. And a lot of people go into it and says, well, uh, I think I want to put in this. I want to mix this up and I want to do this. No, you need to stick to what the book is telling you to do. So a lot of the times people will talk to you and they'll say, oh, well, you know, yeah, but I, I make the smoothies and I do a green smoothie and I put a banana and I put a peach and I put an orange in it and I want to do this. And I go, no, you, we are, we're doing the 10 day green smoothie cleansers. This is what we need to do. And at the end, what it is, is discipline. Can you be disciplined for 10 days to do this? Now there was one book, I think it was, was it the, um, the 30 day or there was one program where we were challenged to drink V8 juice. I can't stand V8 juice. And I said, Lord, okay, I can't drink this. I hate this. I can't do this. But in reality, yes, we can. We can do anything that we want to do. Now, some people are allergic. They can't, you know, so we're not saying you you absolutely have to. If you can't do it, you that's something you can't do, but then don't add something because you can't do it. Take it out, but continue on with what's there. So like I told you, Tris, when we were doing it, you had that one recipe. Okay, it's peaches. You don't like peaches, don't add the peaches. But the less fruit you have in the drink, the better for the weight loss, correct? So Correct. the more greens you can put in, the better. So, okay, you don't like the peaches that they don't put the peaches in. Okay, so it's peaches and strawberries. Okay, we'll get, put you in a few more strawberries. That's not going to hurt you, but don't add in uh, a banana that day because you want to put the banana in because now you're changing the ingredients and also the calorie count that's in, implemented into that smoothie. So we, don't, we want you to see the results from the 10 day. So if you're going to do your own thing, then you might as well not even sign up to do the, the 10 days. So I always tell people, if you're going to sign up, be ready to do what's in the book. Otherwise, if you're going to do your own thing, then you're not really ready to do it. So yeah. I can show you and I can guide you through it, but you got to be willing to have the discipline to do exactly what the book is telling you. So for the 10 days, like the Our Health Matters group that we have, that's a free group. Anybody can join that. And in that group, what we do is whatever you do, vegan, whatever you do to keep yourself healthy, we like for you to post in there so that you can hold yourself account accountable. Now I post a lot and people probably say, damn, how many times she posts a day? Oh my gosh, she posts forever. But it keeps me accountable. And Everybody in there, and I tell them a, a lot, thank you, because it holds me accountable because I'm posting. So I'm like, okay, well, six months from now, 
you're going to be looking at me like, okay, well, she's doing all of this, but she ain't losing nothing. So that's my accountability. You know, so, okay, I can't be talking about it and I'm, and I'm not doing it. So I got to, I got to, I got to continue this and continue doing what I'm doing. So that's my accountability. So I like to post and do what I'm doing so that you can see that it, it, it actually works. So I tell people do what, what's best for you, but if posting helps you uh, with your accountability, then do it. So when I do a group, you're required to post in the group at least once a day, if not more so that I can see that we see that you're there. Now, if you're in the group and you're never posting and you're just looking, we're probably never gonna say anything to you because that means that you're not ready. You're and straight. So why should we take any portion? Why, why should we say anything if you're not even ready to put yourself out there to hold yourself accountable for what you're doing? So we may see you, but you have to be accountable for what you're doing in your actions. So if you put a post in there and we see you, oh yeah, we, we okay, you're ready. And we're gonna post back and say, hey, keep doing what you're doing, but we gotta see that you're in the group and you're active. Sometimes Maya will put up exercises and she'll say, hey, give me 20 squats. The person that puts up 20 squats, sometimes she gives out gifts. Sometimes she, but we're not gonna tell you what we're gonna do. We're not gonna tell you if you're gonna get a gift. You know, uh -huh. we wanna see who's gonna really do, be consistent with it, you know? Right. Um, and, and, and keep going at it because it's really just, we fall off. We've been doing this since 2017. There were times when I went up and down, back and forth, up and down with my weight. Um, and it was just the consistency. Now it's just the consistency of it that has helped me to be able to learn how to take the weight off and put the weight on. So sometimes like over this holiday, I gained 16 pounds back. I gained 16 pounds back, but I also knew how to take it off. So when we started the 10 day, that was it for me. I was like, okay, now I need to take it off. And at the end of the 10 day, we all put up what we lost. And I had actually lost 11 pounds of the 16 that I had gained. Um, but through this experience of this first 10 day, um, this was actually the first time that I experienced where I had lost weight too fast. So I ended up having to have a piece of candy during the 10 day because my sugar had dropped so low that I almost passed out. Mm. The first time that that had happened to me because I had went too fast. So like the first week I had lost 10 pounds, it was ridiculous. So I had to slow it down. Um, and that was actually the first time that that happened to me. So you got to know, you also have to know your body and what you or what you can do. So sometimes I say, do, when I'm in a group, I'll say, do what works for you. So all the information that we're putting in there don't, don't take it for what we're putting the information in there, but you also have to know yourself in your body, what works for you. So sometimes we'll put it in there. It doesn't mean, yeah, that's going to work for you. Try it. See if it works for you. If it doesn't go on to the next vegan may work for you. Keto may work for you. Um, just eating healthy may work for you, but if we're putting the information in there, it might be something that triggers you to do something. So that's why we, uh, uh, our health matters is like, okay, what do you do? What do you do? Okay. This is how we work to take care of our weight. Now there were other things that I did along the way that I talk about as well. Um, after I was certified in the, um, the 10 day, um, 10, 10 day green smoothie cleanse, but that's how I, that's how we take That's how I take care of my health as well. I also see a nutritionist and then I also take vi vitamin supplements. I take liver focus. Um, and people say, you know, what's the difference with the brands for me, the difference with the brand is, and I'm just going to keep it real. Um, who I, who I choose to support who makes the brand. So the brand of Liver Focus is made by JJ Smith. I choose to support JJ Smith's brand. So that's whose Liver Focus, I, that's what I use. Because if you look at the ingredients on um, one package and the other, the ingredients is the same. So when I look at a brand, I'm looking at who do I wanna support? I'm not looking at you know what it is, okay? Because a brand is a brand is a brand. What's the ingredients? The ingredients is the same. Liver Focus is Liver Focus. How people take liver focus and they go, oh, it's not working. They take it for one week, which is a, a vitamin supplement to clean the liver. And, I've, I'm, and people are always asking me about liver focus. Oh, it doesn't work. Yeah, it does work. However, you have to be consistent with it. See, we got a problem. We don't like to be consistent. Mm -hmm. We want that magic pill. And if it don't work in two months, if it don't work in three months, oh, it don't work for us. Well, how do you know if it worked if you haven't even gone to the nutritionist to see what's going on with your liver? Absolutely. 
All right. So I have also I also follow up with a nutritionist and I see my nutritionist every three months, every six months. So at one point I had a fatty liver and I was using liver focus and I was going constantly checking up on my liver. And I saw in my sonograms and what, what was going on with my liver. And I saw when it was decreasing, when the fatty liver was going, now I don't have a fatty liver, but it was also me using the liver focus. So is liver focus gonna work? Yeah, it's gonna work. Can you tell by just taking it? Absolutely not. So exactly. I tell people, align yourself with a nutritionist, find out your numbers, know what your numbers are, and then go from there. Um, keto happens to work with, for me. I love keto. Um, also people say, well, you know, my kids, my kids, uh, they're overweight. They, 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 they won't eat right. They won't eat correctly. Well, we've, we've trained our kids to eat like that. It's mm -hmm. years of our yeah. kids eating like that. Yeah. Years. Okay. Yeah. So my kids were eating bad like that because we were conditioned to eat like that years. Guess what happened? I started years of eating correctly. My kids were still eating the way I had trained them to eat. They were still eating like that. I slowly didn't bring it into the house, little by little, you know, but they were still then, you know, there's a, their father and, we're, and I are not together. So they were born over. So they're going to eat over the air and then it, so all that was triggering, but it's, they watch what you do. They watch what you do. Say. And finally this year, my kids was said, well, we want to do what you do. And so they did, my entire family did the 10 day with me this year and everybody lost weight. My 16 year old did it entire two weeks. My 20 year old did it their entire two weeks. My other two, they, they don't need, they don't need to, to, to lose any weight, but they eat healthy. And my little one, she was, she's always eating healthy since you, know, you, you can't get her to eat anything that's not healthy. Um, but they watch what you do. So I also had a client, she says, I, I'm worried about my daughter, you know? And I said, just, you keep doing what you're doing. She, she'll, she'll flip, she'll flip. She'll, she'll follow suit. She'll follow suit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Trish, uh, what are you doing now uh, to keep yourself moving in the direction you want to go in with respect to healthy eating and just being healthy in, in, in you know, Okay. In general? I'm still, doing, I'm still doing my shakes. <laughs> I'm still doing my smoothies. Okay. Okay. I actually went to the supermarket before the conference um, to get some more kale because Actually, kale is like the one of the only vegetables my youngest one likes. Mm -hmm. So when she asked me for omelets, mommy, do you have any kale? Yesterday, I didn't have no more kale. I put the broccoli. Oh, why you put so much broccoli? Now, mind you, she used to love broccoli, wanted to eat it every day. I guess she <laughs> got fed up with it. Her nor my oldest daughter can't stand spinach. So me and David have to do the spinach. They do the kale um, for dinner. I haven't even prepared dinner yet. <laughs> I haven't prepared dinner for them yet, but I already know the carbs are no, no. Yeah. The carbs yeah. are no, no. Mm -hmm. I will have to make the jasmine rice for the baby because she needs to take lunch every day to her um, learning center. Right. So. I have to make sure I keep her with her food. But for the rest of us, and I'm really not a meat eater, so that's why the keto, I'm looking at it and like, okay, I love my fish. Love my seafood. I can eat seafood every every day. Yeah, me too. I love my vegetables. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my going to be my go-to. Mm -hmm. That's going to be my go-to because... I always say every summer, I want a bikini body. I want a bikini body, but I'm going to get my bikini body. It may not be bikini like those supermodels, but um, <laughs> yeah. I, It'll I, be a two-piece. Yeah. It's funny because even when I was super in shape, I didn't wear a two-piece. I did not want to display my body. Yeah. yeah. So, but now I'm going to display it for myself, for myself. I'm going to put it on display. Mm -hmm. And you can sexy by summer, as JJ would say, sexy by summer. You can sexy by summer. 
I, I think about the outfits for Carnival, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. But I have a question for Maya. Mm -hmm. Maya, what made you want to compete? I was going to ask her that. We are we on the same uh, train of thought there. Oh, wow. The short answer is um, this is my second marriage. In my first marriage, I was overweight. And my first husband just told me out the blue, you know, you fat, right? And I was like, oh. fat as in fat or P-H-A-T? Because if you P-H-A-T, that's a you, good thing, right? Yeah, he was like, exactly. no, you, you, you fat, fat. And I was like, oh, okay. So I need to do something about that. So I went to the gym um, and I was taking a couple of uh, classes, some kickboxing classes. And the trainer there was like, have you ever thought about, he didn't say um, doing competitions. He said um, doing like a swimsuit competition thingy. And I was just like, I had kids, uh, I got stretch marks, ain't nobody doing that. Like that's a turnoff because when you think about those competitions, you think of women who are perfect. Yes. You look mm -hmm. at, you know, your Serena Williams, you look at the, you know, you look at these women, J-Lo, they're, they're perfect from your perspective. So as I started going, you know, through my weight loss journey and toning up, divorcing the negative Nancy, yeah. um, uh, and that was a whole blessing. That's a whole nother conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, and coming into my new blessing and I started competing and seeing what this is really like and what this really is about. I was just like, wow, I love this. So I kind of fell into the world of competing. Mm -hmm. um, it, I wish that this was something that I could have started when I was 19 years old, honestly. Hello, yeah. Um, but wow. I started right on time. It was when I was supposed to start. Exactly. And I compete next to women who are 50, 60, 70 years old. Mm. And to see these women up close, they're not perfect. That's the thing. That's mm. what I love about this sport, to hear these women um, and hear their testimony and hear, yeah, I came down from 300 pounds and I'm wow. looking at them like, you know, and this is no surgery. This is all natural. And it really takes the excuses um, out of your world, out of your mouth, because you have no more excuses. And it's, it mm -hmm. really is a humbling experience to stand in a two piece or lack thereof in front of judges and be judged mm -hmm. and critiqued on your body. It's a very humbling experience, but I do think it's an experience that every woman should experience at least once. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be ready for that, but okay. Okay. I don't know if I'm ready for that at 67, <laughs> but you know, you never know. I, I, you know, I like to leave the door open, you know, cause you never know, you know? So, um, I know during the, uh, 10 day, I lost 11 pounds as well. Now I got on the scale a little while ago, I gained two pounds, but you know what? I didn't knock myself for that because it could be water weight. I've been drinking a lot of water. It could be water. I have not been doing anything that's not in alignment with the plan. Because I went from the 10 day, cause see, I developed a plan to follow because okay, what are you gonna do after the 10 day? Mm -hmm. I needed to know what I was gonna do after the 10 day. It's I went straight into awesome. keto. Mm -hmm. I had no starches whatsoever. No. No carbs whatsoever other than what is in vegetables. And from when I reach my goal weight, which is somewhere between 155 and 165, I plan to move into becoming a vegetarian. So, you know, I, I'll kind of gauge that because I was a vegetarian uh, for about three years, years ago. And I liked it. Um, so, I mean, I, I will gauge it 
and decide whether or not I want to go that extreme or stay on keto. But I have a plan. And it's so important. We were talking before the, the uh, show got started today. And it's so important to have a plan. You know, everybody makes, like you said, my everybody makes these resolutions. Oh, I'm going to lose 50 pounds, but they have no plan. Therefore, they don't prepare. And therefore, they don't succeed. So everything in life, no matter what it is, we need to have a plan. Okay, I want to go from, because when we started, I was 222.8. Uh, I'm down to two third. When I got on the scale just now, I was 213.2. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so I, somehow I picked up two pounds, but it doesn't matter because, like I said, it could be it can be physiological, chemical, it could be water, uh, weight buildup, because as, as women, we have these hormonal things that go on. So we can't knock ourselves when we know we're doing the right thing. Now, if we're not doing the right thing, then we know what we're doing and we need to cut it out. Exactly. Okay? So, and, and like Tiffany said, we have to be, I, I see a nutritionist as well. Uh, because I had the bariatric surgery, I had some difficulties last year after 20 years uh, out, uh, and I had I was in the hospital for four days, and it turned out I had a gastric stricture, which my stomach was closing up, so the food wasn't going through, and I was regurgitating everything, including water. So once once the doctors knew what was going on, then the plan of action went into play. So, you know, I, I followed, I, I went to the bariatric center here on uh, 611, um, a great bariatric doctor uh, I, I'm seeing now. Uh, I'm seeing a nutritionist there. They have a full, I, you know, I, I see, you know, those uh, medical professionals, I see my regular, my, my uh, primary care physician on a regular basis. And he has me coming back every three months. Uh, so, you know what, sometimes we expect the doctors to, to perform miracles, but we have to tell the doctors what's going on with us so that we can shift plan, plans of action if we need to. I saw my primary care physician this week and I said to him, and he wouldn't have known this if I had, hadn't have said to him, I said, you know what, I'm having memory issues with memory. And there's some cognitive things going on. I, you know, I don't know. I said, I'm a little concerned about it because it feels a little disconcerting. So they gave me right there before I left a cognitive uh, test, which I failed miserably. So the doctor said, he said, it wasn't the worst, but it sure as heck wasn't the best. <laughs> so now when I come back from uh, North Carolina, on the 26th, I'm going to have an MRI of my brain to see if there's anything going on there. Uh, if not, maybe I'll get a little Prevagen or something to help, you know, strengthen the, the brain. But we got to know what's going on with ourselves. And we can't, we got to stop expecting the doctors to, to know, know what's happening with us. We tell the doctors so that they can help us be healthy. Mm -hmm. But we want to go in and the doctors you want the doctors to tell us everything. Well, they don't, they don't know anything about you unless you tell them. So we've got See, the thing about it is if you don't know thyself, then Absolutely. you don't know to advocate for yourself. Absolutely. A lot of people, especially in our community, we don't know how to advocate for ourselves. Absolutely. We do. And I think we talked about this a little bit before we started recording. We... Um, okay. we piggyback on other people because we don't have the muscle strength yet to do the things that you may do. You see, we look at you, we want to piggyback because we don't know how to do those things. Absolutely. I always use this analogy. When I first stepped in the gym, I couldn't do 10 push-ups. I didn't have the ability to, but I kept doing it. I kept doing it day after day after day. It took me a while. Now I can do it only because I built up the endurance and the strength to do it. I had to be empowered. I had to be coached. I had to be monitored. And see, only people who are coached and monitored and trained to do that know to do that. See, you were through 
time and through experience, you knew how to advocate for yourself. You knew after a period of time, something is not right. So I can't really pinpoint it, but I know for the most part, this ain't me. I'm not a hundred percent. And right. you know, next time I go to my doctor, I'm going to tell him this, this, and this. Absolutely. A lot of people nowadays in 2021, they are so afraid of getting that bad diagnosis. Absolutely. When the doctor says, what's wrong? That's why I go to my husband, all of my husband's doctor's appointments. Because I know my husband is going to lie. And I know <laughs> I'm going to stand there and I'm going to say, this is what happened. This is what happened. And you need to stick that thing up way in his brain and get that COVID test. Because my husband didn't want to get it done. Because my mm -hmm. husband know he can't come home until they get that test done. Mm -hmm. I, I don't play them type of games. Mm -hmm. You're going to lie, but I'm going to tell the truth. And my husband always say, you coming with me to my appointment again? I sure am. And he always get that look. That's right. Hello. Let's go. Okay. okay. Hello. You know what? And you know, just so popped in. I just really, really, first of all, okay, so. This your girl Tiffany wrote out info. Number one. <laughs> number two, I have some people that came to visit me from New York. My daughter's about to have a sweet 16, and this is the only weekend they could come. So they pop. Nice. And that's a beautiful thing. However, I am two things here. I did the 10 day challenge, and I'm so proud. I'm proud of me. Yeah, yeah. But I'm so proud of Trish. I know this was an experience. I'm so thankful we were able to do this journey together. Yeah, but, yes, and I felt compelled to share more because I knew that I needed a little more help and you was giving me so much life. I was in competition. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a post because Trish is posting. You know what I mean? And the other thing, Maya, oh my God, I've never met you. And you have been a beam with the process. I think I first did this with you last year, July. Mm -hmm. And Maya has been giving me life because I'm the, the, the Facebook friendship was adopted because of Tiffany Co. And I was like, yeah, I got people here and I got to do this. And I got the 16 year old, I got three people that came to visit. I got the husband, got the dog, got a, you know, and I'm the cooker, I got to clean. But I gotta meet Maya, and I got a, and I got a VIP to do this. So <laughs> I wanted to utilize my VIP card to get on for, even if it's for a moment, mm -hmm. because you ladies have ins you Trish, you inspired me through these ten days. Let me just, I'm oh, I'm gonna give you that because it's hard for me too. Maya, you have been giving me life since Tiff Co brought you into my life. So I just, I, I'm just so honored. And what you're doing, your body is sick, yes. However, <laughs> your, mind, sick, sick. your mind is bold mm -hmm. and power. And I just appreciate you, you know? So thank you so much, even with the husband thing, because I know what you're talking about. But you are real talk, you are the real deal. And I don't know if I... Our listeners need to really know that the sistership, this is true. When you see, oh, real talk, hashtag real talk. This is hashtag real talk, capital Absolutely. bold, big Absolutely. font, all of that. These are real people doing real things. And Absolutely. this is an amazing, amazing group of women. And, and Tiffany Co. and Mama C, thank you so much for incorporating me into this fold, into this world. But I, ha I had to. I said, y'all got to give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Real quick Put minute. Food in the oven. Just give me a minute. I got it over there because I know it's, it's healthy. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, it is this week. Um, and that's because I'm coming off. So I'm still in my high. Mm -hmm. um, I steamed the shrimp versus mm -hmm. the butters and all of those different pieces. Mm -hmm. Got the fresh basil, the fresh cilantro, the, you know, the fresh yes. ingredients to throw into it. When I do work with some salts, it's the pink Himalayans and yes. just very, very right. small amounts is necessary. Mm -hmm. um, grounding things to make that come together. Now I'm going to front, they do got some bread. But, um, <laughs> but with the, you know, I got this oil. Oh God. I love my life. I got this oil from a client and the oil was pressed in Italy and it's a bottle that was given to Megan and Harry for their wedding. Wow. I got, I got wow. one. I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll make a picture and put it up there. <laughs> I, 
I love being me right now. I, you know what I'm saying? I was so blessed. So I'm so excited about that, but I use that olive oil. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing that. Got fresh fruit, nice little crudite and some spinach pie. So I did that really, really quickly. Um, and a rotisserie chicken. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. okay. Now I don't eat the chicken. I'll eat some of the shrimp. I don't eat the chicken, but again, I'm such a fan I, and I'm so thankful I had a VIP password to get in and, <laughs> and be part of the fandomonium of, of the beauty of this. I don't talk about what I lose and what I gain too much. Mm -hmm. What I will say is there is a pair of jeans that I wasn't trying to do because I had a little rollover, but they went up and there's no rollover. Hey, you know what? And, and let me say, on my trip, that's the best. North Carolina, I have three pair of jeans that I could not wear. Mm -hmm. I tried them on, and I can now wear them. They went in the suitcase last night. You know, hey. so that was inspiration right there. And as mm -hmm. a health educator, I think it's important. I want to go back. It's so important to connect to your health care professionals mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and utilize them. That's a tool. That's a tool that will help you enrich your life. Therefore, you can empower your life. You can't empower your life without mm -hmm. the right tools. You know, some women are always talking about, oh, I'm living an empowered life. Oh, I'm living an empowered life. Well, what does that mean? And then you stop and ask them what it means. They can't tell you what it means. You know, they, they have this feeling. But you know what? Empowerment goes so beyond what you feel. It's mm -hmm. what you do. And so yeah. I think it's so important. And, you know, I, I, I love uh, when I went to college, uh, learning about, you know, if, uh, helping people to become healthier and to live healthier lifestyles. Because mm -hmm. if your body is sick, your mind is sick. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, so we've got to get our minds together. And if we get our minds together, our bodies will come together. Yes. You know, yes. we will understand what we need to do for ourselves. One of the things we have got to get away from is the post-traumatic uh, uh, stress of the slavery gene that's followed us all the way mm -hmm. from slavery to here. We have eaten a certain way. We always, we, we are continuously eating like we're slaves, trying to eat whatever we can get our hands on. It don't matter, you know. We have now got to start living a That's different focus. way. We've got to way. stop eating all of these foods that, you know, okay, once upon a time, maybe that's all we had to eat. But now we have the privilege of being able to read labels and understand what it is in this food that could be detrimental to our bodies. Mm -hmm. And all the years I, 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 and I designed the first wellness program in Harlem for women. And let me tell you something, women flocked to that program because there was nothing like it around. Okay. And I, some of those women have reconnected to me on Facebook and I now see their lives and how much that program helped them to transform their life. I'm like, wow, sometimes I just get goosebumps. And I just said, I thank God because that was part of the, the, the path that God has put me on. And it was part of my purpose. So, you know, living a life that's had, that has uh, been able to help other people, I, I can't think of anything mm. more humbling yes. and more, uh, what a privilege. You know, uh, and I think Maya was saying earlier, well, you know, everybody has this me, myself, and I mentality. It's all about them. They want to be the flyers. They want to be the best. They want to be seen. Some of them are the most low self-esteem and high insecurity people I've ever run into. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I stay away from them. And some of them got money. They got titles. They got degrees up the wazoo but they're the most pathetic women I've ever seen in my life because they're, they're filled with insecurity and low self-esteem. And guess what? 
That's yeah. never going to help you become the person you have the ability to become. Go ahead, Tiffany. What did you want to Naya, Can you repeat that? Because we were doing it. We said that you were talking about that before the show started. But can you repeat what you were saying? Um, what we were talking about? Oh, about being just about I being thought, selfish. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I was saying that this is not called this is called an iPhone for a reason. It's, it's, not, it's not called a U phone. It's called an <laughs> iPhone. Mm -hmm. Because everything, this world is geared towards being selfish. This world yeah. is good about teaching us to be selfish. Ooh. You know, and I know my pastor this morning was talking about, for example, on an airplane, when they teach you how to, they go through the spiel about putting on a seatbelt. And when the, the, you know, the oxygen mask comes down, what's the first thing you're supposed to do when it comes do down? Yourself. You do on yourself. yourself. Do yourself. Mm -hmm. Which, which I, we do, when, when you think about it, it makes sense. Makes I, we sense. get it. But in a large grand scheme of things, this world teaches you look out for you first before your neighbor. And we have to start thinking outside of us. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Yes. And, and, just and, and, a little bit. And we are, we're just a selfish people. And then we look at people wilding out and then we judge. Like we judge those people at the Capitol. Look at them fools, them some fools. And we don't think for a moment, if we would, ain't had no smarts, that could have easily been any last one of us. Hello. Let's be very yeah. clear. Hello. Because as a people, the situation has been flipped where we were judged. Right. Yes. We wanted grace. So we all just need to stop for a moment and just care for one another, mm -hmm. love one another and be patient. I know as a trainer, when people come to me, that's the most frustrating thing in the world is when people say, Maya, help me. They pay me and I tell them what they need to do and they don't do it. And I'm just like, so they just giving their money away. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. But you know what, Maya? Learn how to be patient with people. Right. Mm -hmm. Because right. at one time, you were disobedient too. As Ew. a matter of fact, I Hello. remember that. This is God speaking to me. Wasn't it last year, Maya, when you lied to your trainer and told him you did everything you were supposed to do? And he kept looking at you like, I know you done did something stupid because I'm looking at your body. Uh -huh. you and you lied so let's just keep it real let's be really clear here mm -hmm. everybody deserves grace and patience we're going to all make mistakes we have to be patient with people but one thing we must stop doing is thinking that it's all about us because mm -hmm. it's not yes but you know maya you know one of the problems it, uh, you know in the bible talking about love thy love thy neighbor as thyself the problem is most people don't love themselves. That's so how right. do you love your neighbor if you don't know how to love yourself? You don't. And that's where the problem comes in or the challenge, I like to call it. You know, because it's fixable, but you got to be willing to do the self-work. I do a program that I call Meology, Mastering the Science and Fine Art of Self-Love. You got to love yourself. You got to, but you know what? You got to be connected to God. God taught me how to love myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nobody outside of me taught me how to love. God taught me how to love myself, how to stop, the, stop the madness. Okay. And it took me a while to start getting in, in the, the, the process of loving myself more. And I'm still working on that. And I think that loving yourself is a non-ending process because when you go from phase to phase to chapter to chapter in your evolution as a human being mm -hmm. each phase and each chapter has different requirements yeah but yes. if i'm 67 and i'm still trying to live in chapter two i got a problem that's not self-love i'm hating where i am right now because i want to be back to where i was yeah, I may have been a fly fly girl or diva at, 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 at in my in my late 30s and 40s, but I'm not, not in my late 30s and 40s anymore. I'm in my 60s going on 70. Okay, three years, I'll be 70. So who am I now? So each phase of our life requires that we assess who we are right now, not who we used to be 
And that's the problem. I, I run into a lot of women. They're still trying to be fly girls at 50, 60. First of all, no, you're still fly. Let's see. I don't even <laughs> you know, know what we're talking about. You know, but fly in a, fly. Way, in a different way. In a different way. Seeing you it, on fly. <laughs> let, let's just be clear with the 60, whatever that is on the back. We see you fly every day. You got the wrap, that's fly. You got the shirt, that's fly. You got the glasses, that's fly. You got good teeth. Let's talk about that because you're doing the right thing. You know, so you are always so amazingly beautiful. And, oh. I, and I get what you're saying. Um, you know, and I heard Tris talk, someone, I, I, I had it, you know, even while it wasn't here, I was like this. Someone talked about a bathing suit and a bikini or something. That, that, that was Trish. That was me. Trish, Trish, was I'm going to be naked till I die. I'm going to have a pair of pasties till I die. <laughs> and, and the thigh highs. And the thigh highs till and I die. Thigh highs. And I say that, I got the thigh highs. What I will say is, Maybe as time progresses, the audience of people that will experience that version of me will get start to get smaller. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I'm a habit, okay? But, you know what? but, but Tiffany, <laughs> you're always doing what you do with respect to how you look with yeah. taste yes. and class. Yes. And that's the difference yes. there, okay? You know what looks good on you and what doesn't look good on you. I know what looks good on me and what doesn't. I'm not trying with my little belly fold to wear a bikini, okay? But also, but what I will wear you're in, and also what setting you're in because you're not going to take that to corporate. You're not going to... Right, exactly. Right, exactly. You don't right. know what exactly. setting it belongs into because I can take my thigh highs and know what setting I'm going into but I don't take my thigh highs and I'm going into the corporate world okay you know what setting you're taking it into and that is the situation and the problem right there is a lot of people don't know when to take the ghetto and leave it in the ghetto okay well, a, you know what the, the problem well, you is know I'm part holy women. and part hood yeah. I'm part holy and I'm part hood you know hood. I right. that. me too part holy <laughs> part hood I think that's the yeah, the nine Last week she had the nine ready. Okay, I got the nine okay. ready. She I got the Vaseline ready. Mm -hmm. I got the scrunchie to pull the head up. However, in the circle of fabulousness, mm -hmm. it's so it's weird but beautiful. Weird in a great way because I'm weird. Mm -hmm. The frequency. So a few days ago, I wrote on Facebook, and it came from my space. It came from just a, something. And I said, make time and carve out a space in your heart. So I, I was sharing, take some time. You're going to have to carve this out because it might not just be the natural thing to do, but take some time and think this through. And in your soul to have love for your neighbor. And I heard this, the women, we didn't have this. We didn't it's have a, 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 a conversation That's prior to that. Mm -hmm. So for us to all be in alignment with that, Frequency, understanding, creativity, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. This is so important. Exactly what Maya was sharing. I have definitely, I haven't fallen from grace. I was under the dirt of grace. I was being walked over by some graceful people. That's how jacked up I have been in my world. In the world of Tiffany, I've made some horrible mistakes. And in the time of making a mistake, didn't think there was a mistake. You know what I mean? I thought it was my truth. And right. sometimes we live in our truth and our truth ain't right. Absolutely. That being said, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful, number one, to be here. I'm so thankful for everybody that has forgiven me for the crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for those who said, ah, oh, she just this, we going, whatever. And I'm thankful for those who didn't because there's an accountability to crazy too. And, but at this particular time with the knowledge that's here, my wisdom in that platform, because I still got a lot to get, but my wisdom right. in that platform mm -hmm. will hold you up. If you're looking and you're saying, I'm jacked, I'm doing some crazy things. If you're willing to hear, sometimes not even listen, just hear. Maybe today is just a hearing. Mm -hmm. Next time might be, you know what? I remember something. I'm now want to hear her again because now I can listen. It's everybody's journey is so different. And Absolutely. the PTSD that we have gone through to get to this point is so Absolutely. different. And everybody Absolutely. got a story. You know, Absolutely. I'm sure Maya share, you know, again, she said 10 push ups. I can, uh, 10 push ups. <laughs> 10 push ups. <laughs> I know. I remember, 10, 10? 
I'm like, I'm like, my kneecaps won't do that. <laughs> I danced my whole life. I did so many things. What I could never do was a pull up. Never to the point where I don't do that. Yeah, you know, I'm. What's that? You know, like had an attitude. Like I don't need that in my life. Knowing deep down inside, oh God, I wish I could just. Do <laughs> but I had to be bold with it. You know. And when I was able to first do that first pull up, and then it was five. You couldn't tell me nothing in my head about that time. <laughs> you couldn't tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. I, and I still was so arrogant in my mess. That wasn't even trying to make people think that I was proud of me. Mm -hmm. Wow. I was so arrogant in the fact that wow. I was like, there ain't nothing. Then I was like, what's wrong with you? You better jump for joy. Every goal, every moment, be happy within yourself. And that's going back to what you said about loving yourself. Because me not even ex being happy, showing the happiness was disliking me. Mm. Absolutely. And you got to know what what your issues are. And I'm going back to the doctor uh, uh, again. Uh, during the winter, I have suffered from a season, seasonal affective disorder. Every winter, mm -hmm. they call it sad. My doctor put me on a prescription vitamin D and then moved me to an, uh, a, a supplemental vitamin D, said take it all winter. I have never felt better in my whole day mm -hmm. on life. I'm like, I was vitamin D deficient. Wow. You know? Yeah. I was seriously I vitamin C. Eat, it's up the East Coast in quarantine. We all vitamin D deficient. So Absolutely. Mama C. So yes. to get rid of the sad, we just got to go to the Caribbeans, right? Uh, oh, good Lord. That, that would make me very happy right about now. Give me a little money. <laughs> I'm going to go on. Sistership. Okay, so we're going to have a GoFundMe page because in order for us to give you all the positive tea and all this experience, we need to have a pilgrimage. So we're going to have a GoFundMe, everyone that's listening. <laughs> yeah. We can empower ourselves to empower you. Uh, I, so, hey, <laughs> Tiffany, it sounds like a plan to me. But let me just also say, when you were talking okay, right about- back. I got to take some out the oven. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> One of the things that we have to understand is we are not one dimensional beings. We no. are multi dimensional beings. And see, the problem is everybody's trying to be one dimensional when that is not how God created us. So when I realized that it was okay, I had all of these different personalities. I'm like, wow, you know, I like this personality for that, this a personality for this, this look for that, and all. It, it makes life interesting and even exciting, you know? Living a multi-dimensional life is what we as human beings are supposed to do, okay? Not follow this tunnel vision lifestyle, this in the box lifestyle, all of that keeps us from being the awesome, powerful beings God created us to be. You know so what, Mom? Will... Go ahead, uh, go ahead, uh, I am radiant. <laughs> on that level when you talk about the multi-dimension that we are and that's how we was created mm -hmm. and then when do we how do we get away from it and I say that because I look at my three-year-old grandchild and to see her every day act out a different component mm -hmm. she'll want something she reenacts it mm -hmm. I was on the phone with her while I was in the store mm -hmm. and she goes, oh no, nah, nah, I'm not Navy right now. I'm such and such. So talk to such and such right now. Uh-huh. So I had to go into character with her. That's right. So when do we stop or what turns that off? Uh, we are trained out of our spiritual connection with God and the God presence within us that keeps us moving in alignment with who we truly are. That is a living a in the box of uh, tunnel vision life is a learned behavior. And see, I didn't grow up with anybody, I didn't grow up in the church, so nobody taught me how to do X, Y, Z, and I had to stick to X, Y, Z. I didn't grow up uh, with parents who who just were out of their minds. Uh, I had to be whoever I was 
from the age of like four, five years old. And then I was pretty much on my own at age 10 after my two older sisters, one went off to, got married and went off to Germany with her husband who was in the military. And the other one took off at, at 17. Uh, she was a licensed practical nurse when she came out of high school and then she went into college. Uh, so there I was 10 years old, 12 years old by then. Uh, but I've always been, there's always been this multi-dimensional facet to my life. Mm -hmm. I never lost that and no one taught me to lose okay. that. No one okay. ever taught me that I have to be this way and that's it. Okay. okay. So I've always lived a multi-dimensional life. And I thought something was wrong with that because people always would say to me, you're different. And the way they would say it made me feel like something was wrong with me. But they had all been trained to be in alignment with what the world has taught them. Yes. And you know what else? Sometimes experiences, trauma, um, steals your joy. Yeah. Okay. And you become somewhat of a robot. Yeah. And you lose laughter. Scared. You lose fun. Yeah. Uh, you start looking like you've aged. You mm -hmm. you lose that youthfulness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes yes. it's just life um, and just trauma after mm -hmm. trauma. I have a lot of clients who just have been through a lot of crap. They've been through hell. And that, yes, and, and they're they, still there. They're still wow. there, but it's like they're a shell of a person. Yeah, and wow. they don't wow. they don't know how to laugh, <laughs> mm -hmm. and they don't have any joy because it's almost like it has been sucked. So the life crazy. has been sucked know. out of them for so yeah. long. For so long, exactly. And when you try to speak life, and you try to speak Christ, mm -hmm. and you try to speak love, it's foreign to them. Mm -hmm. and yes. yeah that makes but any you know, sense you know what yes. a lot of those per people are sitting up in church though and but that's why i tell people there's nothing wrong with church but you you better not go in looking for god you better go in with god at your side walking in with god but then you know you, you because when you have to change your tribe because okay you, maya you you help them you help and you counsel these people but yeah. sometimes it's just the people that you have around you because yeah. they can't get out of what they are in because the people around them are in the same situation and they are still feeding them. They're holding that's them. Food. That's holding them. So yeah, I mean, absolutely. Birds of a feather flock like together. That. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's one thing that I've learned. And I don't know if I shared this with you, Tiffany, when I embarked on this fitness health lifestyle, because I'm a social butterfly. I love mm -hmm. being out and mm -hmm. talking to people mm -hmm. and just having a good time. But the minute I picked up kale and put down that other stuff and picked up water and green juices oh, yeah. and weights mm -hmm. yeah. and started going to the gym, I lost okay. a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like my circle changed and, and it yeah. changed so quickly. So, and it, and it was very hurtful. Yes, it and was. I didn't, yeah. I didn't understand because I thought that these people would support me I mm -hmm. thought that they would be my biggest cheerleader because they mm -hmm. were my friends. Right. Um, and not to say that they're not my friends, it's just that we're not as tight as we used to used be to because be. my perception and my reality has changed. Yeah. Yeah. Mexican restaurant drinking um, margaritas is not my Friday thing right. anymore. Right. But right. right. I'm saying, right. so yes, your circle does have um, a big thing to, to do with, who you are and since right. my life has changed my circle have to change and that's the thing about people especially in our culture mm -hmm. we don't understand the art of sacrifice mm -hmm. people want to lose weight mm -hmm. but they don't understand that you may have to sacrifice some of those friends you hanging out with mm -hmm. because they mean you yes. no good i'm it's not saying you have you're to, doing 
And, right. And I'm not saying you have to cut them out your life. What I'm saying is you, you may have to limit some of the time that you're spending yeah, with them because absolutely. it's hard to spend time with them and all they do is drink. And yeah. you know, drinking is not a part of your regimen. I'm just saying. You yeah. have to make a choice. It's either yeah. you're going to serve the, the world or you're going to serve the Lord, period. There is no straddling the fence. Trisha, it's gonna be I'm not, tr during the 10 days, did you, did you not go out with someone or do something based on this journey? Tiffany, I'm going to be totally transparent with you. My children, and this may sound crazy, but my children are my world. So my, my oldest daughter, she works in the hospital. She doesn't get home until 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning. So I pick the baby up from the learning center and then the baby is with me. Okay. My other daughter, she works at Wendy's. Okay. So I have to drop her off. So, and COVID is real. Right, right, right. right. Okay. okay. <laughs> My my interaction is sistership. Yeah, Got gotcha. you. Okay. Okay. Come on, okay. Come on, well, I, I'll come on. say for me, listening to what Maya was sharing, when I'm on this journey, when I'm like real focused in it, there are events that I don't go to that I'm a norm with. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I know that first of all, I got good willpower and then I don't. Okay. So sometimes I'm Will, Will and I are very good friends and sometimes Will and I are not good friends. So I know my journey oh, is where Will and I are not. And, and this was harder for me because I think with COVID, I've allowed a lot. I've been lackadaisical on a lot of things when it comes to my eating. Okay. I, you know, I haven't, and I haven't gone out and I haven't done things. So when there's a moment, it's like, I'm indulging in a different kind of way. Mm -hmm. And so when this 10 days, there's been, you know, I'm always invited places. And I was like, no, I can't go. I can't go. I just said, no, I'm not going right. because right. I knew that I wasn't, I probably wasn't prepared to not say yes to something that I knew wasn't. Now I did this and now I have friends over. And I'm not, I don't need that, that other, that I'm sharing the right. blessings and I'm sharing right. the things that I know that they enjoy, but I'm able to sit back and here's my salsa while I do this for you. I'm good today, right. But, right. I, right. but I knew these 10 days I needed to not, I needed to just really keep it small. Right, right. Okay, Tiffany. Call a row. Row, row. Okay. <laughs> Let, let me, let me be, remember what you gave me? Yes. Yes. I, it's still in my fridge. Don't tell that one. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> hey, you can't drink that now. I know. That's why I, I did it before. Mom, and she was like, oh my goodness, mommy, who made this? She was like, did you taste it? I said, I tasted it today. I got it. But I was already preparing myself for the 10 got days. You. Got right. you. Right. And I said, I'm gonna leave it there because that's gonna be my treat. Right, right, right. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and it's and 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 one of the reasons I, I had shared, I don't share weight. Um, I've learned more, I think it and it took a while. Be, and again, coming from the dance world, dance world is a different beast, especially being a brown, I and mean, I shared this on some earlier shows, being a brown dancer who was a ballerina. So it was right. really about being almost bone sk skinny nasty. Skin. Yeah. It's really, it really was a whole different world. But that being said, I'm sure if Maya got on the scale, you look at her, you might think it's one weight, but because she's muscle, it may be different. Be something different. Else, and yeah. the numbers can jack somebody's head up. Because I mean, yeah. I want to be 155 pounds, 160. Layla Ali is like, she borders between 190 and two at all given times. Mm -hmm. And then you can't, she's beautiful. Body yeah. is phenomenal. And she is all muscle. And I remember sharing, and I don't know if it was Maya or somebody, but they had put up 
a pound of fat being four sticks of butter, which is real because yeah. that's what it says. Yeah. And a pound of muscle is like the size of your fist almost. You know what I mean? So right. if you got 150 of these versus 150 of these boxes, it's, it says the same thing on the scale but it definitely looks and feels different on the body. Totally. Mm -hmm. totally. So I don't play with the numbers because that'll jack the head up for me. Right. That'll right. jack the head up. I right. just know that I know what zips up the way I need it to zip and feel good. I know if I'm saying hi to somebody and, and this piece hits my back, yeah, I need to work on a little something, but that could still say 150 and it can still smack me in the back. That's right. What I need to say stay off the scale because a lot of people, as soon as they get on a 10 day, they jump on a scale. We, we tell you to weigh yourself in the beginning and then stay off the scale. Cause a lot of people, they good on the scale every day. And mm -hmm. doing that, it plays the mind game. And then you end up defeating yourself because right. you not see, you don't see that scale move. You don't, and you're going, and Trish did it, right? Remember what, what you told me? And I said, it never moves i never lose all weight i said okay and then at the end of the day oh it moved i said oh it did huh because you're not you're not, you're not focusing on it when you mm -hmm. focus so, on that skill it never moves mm -hmm. i'm like tiffany roll i put my clothes on and they fall off like the pants i had on the other day they they <laughs> my kids was like mommy what are you doing i said my pants keep falling i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> so if I could put on an outfit that I used to not be able to put on and be comfortable and then I could put it on and I could go shopping now mm -hmm. th that's what the mind does for me mm -hmm. and the muscle is so important the muscle tone yeah so it's so important that's where the health is that's what's feeding the bones the proper way versus the fat sitting on top of something versus the muscle. You know, like even when, when I, when I'm losing, when I'm really building up my muscle, cause I'm not a pro, you know, if anyone knows, I'm not, I don't eat meat really at all. And it's, and mm -hmm. it's not profound. I just don't like the way it feels in my mouth. I just, yeah, you know, me either. Meat either. so I'm always trying to find other ways to get protein inside of my body. Right. And so that being said, building muscle, I'm very focused and conscious of that. And one of the things I did was because I knew I lost weight. You know, I, mean? I don't know if anybody's dealt with the, oh, those last whatever pounds, whatever your threshold is, that last bit is so hard. I got myself a weighted vest. And so I put that on me because if I was, let's say I was 165, let's just, if we want to play with numbers and now I went down to 150, but I'm still doing the 30 minutes on the treadmill or whatever. If I put that 15 pounds back on me, it starts burning in a different kind of way. Okay. The, low, the smaller you start getting, the less exertion your body is giving you in your workout. So when you put it back on, and isn't it a blessing to be able to put it, take it off the shelf and put it back on versus <laughs> it's just hanging out with you in the first place. Okay. I started building even more muscle. Mm -hmm. And I'm careful with how much the cardio is versus how much the, the, the muscle, the, the building, the weight training, the, 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 core building i know the core is real important you don't want a lot of fat around your major organs and things right. like when you got a big old booty yeah my booty well now booties is in in style but when they weren't in style you all complaining about my thighs my this that's actually the probably the best place the weight should be so it's not on your am i right maya i'm just saying versus your organs well from a bodybuilding perspective okay <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I mean, but from, from the world's perspective, yes. I would rather have thicker thighs and thicker butt than have a, you know, a thicker mm -hmm. midsection. You are absolutely right. Mm -hmm. But from a bodybuilding perspective, it's not what they're looking for. They're looking for symmetry. So they want everything to be leaned out in my division, which is the figure division, they mm -hmm. want the muscle definition to be popping just a little bit, not too, too much, but they looking for that, that symmetry and that um, muscle definition and the, 
the separation in the muscle. It's, it, it's real scientific, but you know, from the bodybuilding perspective is really just different. It's, it's, it's not what you, what you think at all. And the thing about it is we, when you're bodybuilding, you would think that you would, you're eating too much. That's the funny thing. When I'm on my eating schedule, I'm thinking to myself, this is a lot of food he wants me to eat. But in reality, at the end of that week, I don't lost six pounds. Because you're over, you're pushing that body. But it's all about <laughs> the science in the food and the amounts of food. And everybody on the team, our, our prescription of food looks different because everybody's body chemistry is different. It's not a one size fits all. That's Everything that. is different. But you have to also understand in the morning when I work out, I can burn anywhere up to between 850 calories to 1,050 calories. That's just in one hour of lifting weight. I take that back two hours because I spin 45 minutes before I lift. Mm -hmm. And then in the evening, I go ahead and get more cardio in as well. So it's just a lot that entails when you're talking about the toning and the muscle and there's nothing cute about this sport. It's nothing cute about it. My mm -hmm. good friend Lois is a, she's fit. She's um, she used to. And when she, I went to two of her um, competitions and they were in, um, I think one was at BAM. Look, years obviously before COVID. And I wasn't there when she got her pro card but I watched her go through her development. And what I love about Lois, cause we worked out at the same gym, um, actually out here, West End, West End Fitness when, they, when it was West End Fitness. Mm -hmm. Lois would come to the gym, literally, I think she had on the ugliest outfit you could possibly find in the world to wear. Mm -hmm. like, like, and I'm mm -hmm. similar where I, when I go to the gym, I'm there for a purpose. I'm in the biggest clothes, nothing, nothing. Mm -hmm, nothing. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching her do all of these things. And, 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 but you don't see much happening because she's under a lot. You're like, you don't see it. And then I go to this competition with her because I'm supporting my friend. And she gets up there and I'm back there with her and we're helping to put the spray paint on her because she's pale. So she wanted to get some tan on her. And I'm looking at, I'm like, what body is this? And she, I said, this is what you've been under. I, I wouldn't forget about pasties, just booty butt naked if I was looking like that. I just walk around like. Maya, <laughs> the process is no joke. Maya, are you still vegan? No, I did the vegan journey for one year and I tried to bodybuild with it, but my body composition does not work well with being vegan. vegan. Mm -hmm. I cannot sustain muscle long enough on a vegan diet. Now, some people mm -hmm. can, but for me, it did not work. So I do eat, you know, a regular diet. I eat but fish. Um, sometimes, um, some chicken, actually a lot of chicken, eggs and things of that nature, but yeah. no more vegan. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this all goes back to knowing your body, knowing your own body and what works for you. I know when I first had the gastric bypass surgery, I went down to 175. That was my lowest. And everyone's like, oh my God, don't lose any more weight. You are too thin. And I remember thinking, 175 I'm too thin you know it just sounded strange to me because no one's ever referred to me as being thin so you know I mean it, it's all about what works for your body you know how do you look in your body how do you feel in your body you know not in my body you can't feel you in my body mm -hmm. as a matter of fact you can't get into my body and I can't get into yours but we each have to take the fact that we're separate individuals who may be uh, uh, making a journey together, but the results are gonna be different because we're all different people. We have different bodies, different you know, things that impact on how we look. So I think that's so very important for everyone to understand 
Stop trying to compare yourself to somebody else, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And just do you. What's my saying? Be you, do you, for you. Don't worry about anybody else because once you are, are at a space and place where you like how you look, you like how you feel, that's all that matters. But also get into groups where people are doing the same thing. Where you Absolutely. Get ideas of what might work for what might work for you, and then this right. into your body. Um, I know I'm looking in the chat room, and some people are saying that they, you know, they're afraid of keto because of the fat, and they have high cholesterol and diabetes. Let let, let me just say with the keto diet. Um, a lot of people are afraid of it because of the misconception that you can eat all the meat you want and you can eat all the fat you want, and it that's a misconception because there it's a number it's a number numbers game, okay? Mm -hmm. the, the protein is monitored, okay? The fat is monitored. The carbs is less than five five percent. Um, so it's real. You really can't eat all the meat you want all day long. You will not get into ketosis, you will not meet the num the requirements to be into, into ketosis. So if that is something that you want to do, you really have to monitor. It is something that has to be monitored. Um, Let me explain ketosis. Ketosis is when you, um, you, you, you had very low, very little, very little carbs. Your body goes into, you start to burn fat instead of it goes into fat burning mode fat, fat burning mode instead of burning all of the sugars and the carbs and everything else that you're taking into your body um, but in order to do that you have to eat a certain way and then for about three to four four to five days it takes um, a process for you to get into that mode um, and then some people experience the keto flu when they're going into that um that stage Shock. my daughter experienced yeah. that while she was i did too well and um, so did i um, but you have to pretty much measure everything. Um, if you don't know how to do it, we suggest that you use an app so that you know the numbers and what you're doing. Um, there's strict keto, there's um, lazy, keto. lazy keto, there is, um, there's a couple- Lazy of, keto here. There's a couple of ways that you can do it. Pick which one that works for you. I do, mm -hmm. I kind of do the strict, strict keto. Again, I don't, I don't want to eat all the fat that I can eat. I don't want to eat. I want to yeah, do it me. the proper way. Um, so the way that I do it helps me. Again, I don't have to. My diet. I was um, pre-diabetic. I don't have to take medication. I had high cholesterol at one point. I am not. My cholesterol has gone down. My numbers are all correct. So it is not um, something where I was fearful that because I had high cholesterol or because, you know, I was pre-diabetic that it was going to get worse because I was doing a keto diet. So it's just listening to your body and saying, hey, no, maybe let me just try this. Always consult your doctor first. However, again, that doctor doesn't know your body the way you know your body. So mm -hmm. do what works for you. Use an app. There's apps out there. Put your numbers in, see where you are and start from there. Um, and, and then just really focus on okay, trying so to meet those numbers, right? Trying to meet those numbers um, to see if it works for you first before you say you're afraid to do it. Because mm -hmm. if you're looking on TV and all the commercials and keto, yeah, yeah, eat everything that you want. Eat all the bacon you want. Yeah, okay. And put <laughs> butter and coffee. <laughs> yeah, like what? Yeah, I was like, oh, you can. No. I mean, you can, you can. I mean, you can, can but I, no, I, I know to. that's part of it. I, I say you that have, you can have good, you can have the, the, it's the good fats that you're consuming. It's cold with you, oil. Tiffany. There's olive oil. There's, there's, there's ways to have keto without, I mean, the misconception you watch TV, like, oh my God, I'm going to eat all this lard. No, it's not that. And then the branding of it. Now you look on TV, just like they do in everything. Keto. Yeah. Everything is keto, 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 keto. Yes. Stay as natural as you can possibly get. I exactly. do not buy SimFast. The only thing from SimFast I might buy is the fat bombs. Okay. It tastes like a Reese's peanut butter cup. So when I need a treat, that would be my treat. But the SimFast and the keto thing, the keto bars and all of that is processed stuff that you really don't need. It's but you know what, Tiffany? Uh-huh. 
it doesn't even matter what diet you you do you partake in everybody has a set number of macro numbers you have to meet if you do keto Mm -hmm. have macro numbers you have to meet and that's different for everybody so i agree with you tiffany at any given time i can turn on this tv and you can (laughs) see a plethora of things geared towards keto and i'm gonna tell you why because first of all it's the first of the year and they know women we fall prey to the whole weight thing. Mm -hmm. It's just to get in another way of getting inside of your mind, weak minded people fall for that foolishness, which Mm -hmm. is another reason why when I go to the gym tomorrow, the spin bikes won't be available. (laughs) The treadmills won't be available. The squat machines will be full of people who don't know how to squat. I'll be angry and pissed off most likely. (laughs) <laughs> because it's just it's just it's selling a dream mm-hmm. with no proper education absolutely. no proper preparation nothing absolutely but back to the keto whatever kind of diet it is you have macro numbers you have a baseline mm-hmm. and if you think you could do keto and eat all the bacon in the world all the avocado in the world you're setting yourself up for failure and what you will do is you'll gain all of this weight and Absolutely. you'll pull all these inches and then you will blame keto for it. Right. Exactly. Your due diligence as a human being. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And you know what's so important? Tiffany and I were in uh, Walmart and as we went up and down the aisles, the foods in the stores for the most part are not designed to help you live a healthy life. Mm-hmm. They're designed to make money for those who produce those products. And most of those products are so unhealthy for the body Mm -hmm. that it's unbelievable. And and you could go through each aisle and you may be able to pick out maybe two items in that aisle that is conducive to live in a healthy lifestyle. Uh, Better still stay in the produce section. Or you can go over to the meat sections and get whatever meats you need, you know, chicken, fish, and all of that. But when you go shopping, read the labels and mm-hmm. stop falling for all of the yummy goodies. Every time I walk through the cookie aisle, the Oreo Golden say, yo, Deb. <laughs> yo, Deb. The golden ones. The golden ones. I yes. know the golden ones oh are my. special. No, oh. they are special. Oh. I mean, and, and you're right. Like I had a friend tell me, and and he's his body, his body is it's another level of body. Um, <laughs> but he says you shop the perimeter. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. When you start going up and down aisles, is where Everything has a preservative to keep it on that shelf. Everything mm-hmm. has something to hold it so that the shelf life, he says, anything that has a shelf life longer than a refrigeration life or freezer life, that's a problem. To so just keep it in a bag hanging out. If it can hang out like that, imagine what it takes for your body, your body to break it down. To break it down. Like, well, like that daggone McDonald's fry that you didn't like- eat McDonald's for like, a month, but you find it in the, when you go to clean your car and you find this McDonald's fry on the floor of the car, you can't remember when you had McDonald's. However, the fry looks the same. Oh, dear. What is that? Talk about it. But wait a minute now, what taught us a good lesson was COVID because when, this, when we went into the stores and everybody was grabbing the toilet tissue, guess who was the only one in the aisle? The Tiffany's. I'm like, you know, we <laughs> eat stuff and everybody was laughing, but it was, it was nice and empty and everybody was like around me. And I'm like, doo, doo. and they're like, no, don't pick that because everybody coughed over it. I'm like, this is the best aisle in the world because ain't nobody been over here. And I'm getting the ginger and I'm, I'm putting an onion okay. stuff in my car. Mm-hmm. And that, but it, it teaches you that we got it mixed up. The yes. We, we got it totally up. twisted. We got totally it twisted. twisted. And we're wondering why everybody's sick and, and why we have to wear masks because we need to go back to what we're supposed to really be doing. And while the, why, why there's a need for Dr. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I saw but a not show to mention, 
I was like, oh my God, I, I couldn't believe this guy. He had this big old mask that he was carrying around, you know, behind him, uh, and between his, oh my God, it was horrible. Oh, and what, what'd you say, Maya? Just, well, I was just gonna say, but a part of living a healthy, balanced life is being balanced. Yes. So back to those Oreos, no one is saying you can't have an Oreo. But right. then if you look at the back of the nutrition, it says a serving size is two, two. not two sleeves. Two. <laughs> <laughs> because if I'm not mistaken, because your girl loves an Oreo, two Oreos is 150 calories. <laughs> just as much as a meal. Yeah, two sleeves. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So team, yeah. two fire, fire. <laughs> If I get two, I mean two aisles of that those Oreo cookies. Oh, you know, I know how you live it. I, I gotta Ma, stay away from them. Do. This is what you do. This is what crack. I do. Crack in a bag. I go <laughs> to the BJ's and I get the the box. Then it's in packs, and it's only two in a pack. So you got a bunch of packs. So you make it now. See, that's where you're going to be making that decision. Then you open the one. It only got two. <laughs> and then you got to say, okay, and then and, and let me show you what you do. Let me show you what you do. You open it up. And now you got four. <laughs> you got four. Right? I just, there's, a, there's magic here. That, that's the magic. <laughs> right? That's right. <laughs> Let me tell you, that's why I stay out of BJ's too, you know? I'm yeah. not coming home with a big old box we of Oreo golden. We don't come to that time. It's three, two, oh, no. I know, and I'm going to go back to my people that are here. All right. But again, I am such a fan. Thank and, you, and, and So thank you so much for sharing your Sunday. Oh, thank and, you, and, guys. And, 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 and I'm us. telling you, if, if you're watching live, blessings, if you're not wa watching live and you see it on the repeat, share, share, share. Maya is the truth, 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 100, yes. 100. Yes, she is. And red 100 with the percentage. Truth, truth. Thank you so much. I love you, ladies. Bye-bye. Let's talk about this. 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 Sis, uh oh, sis, you know we on a mission, no games. 